Hi everyone, welcome back. Starting a new topic today, which is called organisation. This is going to cover the digestive system and enzymes, the heart, the lungs, blood, and then things like health issues and cancer as well. But for today, we're just going to be looking at the digestive system. So we'll be looking at the main parts, so the main organs you need to know, the functions of each, and then bile, acid and enzymes. So looking at the chemicals that these parts of the digestive system make and what they do to help you break down your food. So as always, grab some paper, grab some pens and follow along with me. Let's start off by looking at the digestive system as a whole then. There are many parts that you need to know and be able to label in an exam. So they are as follows. The salivary gland, which produces saliva, helps you to swallow food. It also produces one of these enzymes that we'll be talking about in a minute that helps break down things like carbohydrates into sugar. Underneath that, you've got the esophagus, which is just the sort of food tube that connects your mouth to your stomach. It's made of muscle and it helps push the food down quickly as possible. Next is the stomach, probably the most famous part of the digestive system, the part that growls when you're hungry. Contains acid to kill pathogens and also makes another enzyme we're going to talk about in a minute. Below the stomach is the small intestine, which I've coloured in pink. The small intestine, despite being called the small intestine, is actually the longest part. It's just called the smallest because it's the thinnest. Here all your nutrients are absorbed and a lot of other enzymes are used as well. After the small intestine you have your large intestine, which is where all your water is absorbed and any sort of remaining salts. It's sort of last stop between your food being food and being a poo. Uh, then other ones that aren't part of the digestive system in the fact that food doesn't actually go through them. You have the liver, which is the big bit in purple. The liver is where lots of different uh, chemicals are made to help with the digestion, but here we're co we are concerned with bile that it makes which helps to break down fat. On the liver, you've, or just attached to it, you've got something called the gallbladder, which is where all that lovely bile is stored. And then sort of tucked behind the stomach in green, you've got the pancreas, which I like to call the enzyme factory. It's the part of your body that makes all the enzymes that you need to break down food. What we're gonna have a look at now is each of the parts in a bit more detail, look at what enzymes they make, we're going to talk about enzymes in a bit more detail next lesson, so don't worry if you don't really get what an enzyme is at this point. You need to know what enzymes there are, where they're made, and what they break down. So let's have a look at that next. Let's start by having a look at a few main parts of the digestive system in detail first. So the first part we're going to look at is the mouth, or rather the saliva glands within the mouth. Now saliva, or spit as it's also known, is really, really useful in helping you to swallow food. It coats your food in a sort of moist layer, so when you swallow it, it slides down that esophagus nice and easy. You also make an enzyme called amylase in your mouth. Amylase is responsible for breaking down carbohydrates like starch into sugar. So often you can um, test this for yourself at home, get a bit of bread, chill on it in your mouth for two or three minutes without swallowing it and you should notice that it starts to taste a little bit sweet. That's because that enzyme in your spit is breaking down the carbohydrate, which doesn't taste sweet, into sugar, which does. After your salivary glands in your mouth, you have the esophagus, that long tube that connects your mouth to your stomach. Now your esophagus, as I said before, is literally just a chute for food. It's a transport in the food from your mouth to the stomach and you've got really muscular walls that squeeze that food down by something called peristalsis. Below your esophagus, you have the stomach. Now your stomach is just basically a big sort of muscly, uh, mucusy bag that your food is sort of kept in while, before you start to digest it properly. Your stomach contains acid, so that's why when you're sick, your mouth burns because the acid in there is causing some damage to these cells. This acid is there not to break down the food like most people think, it's actually there to kill any pathogens, so like bacteria that might make you ill. There's another enzyme in your stomach, this one's called protease, though it's sort of spelled proteas. This one helps break down protein, so your first protein digestion starts in your stomach. After your stomach, so your food stays in there, you know, about four to six hours, depending on what you've eaten, it will get deposited into your small intestine. Your small intestine has an alkaline condition, so the opposite to your stomach. Uh, and this is made using something called bile, which we'll talk about in a little minute. Alkali um, conditions are what the enzymes in the small intestine need. 
so you've got three en enzymes here. You've got protease that breaks down protein. You've got amylase or carbohydrates which break down carbohydrates. And you've got lipase, a new one. Lipase breaks down lipid, which is the posh term for fat, into something called fatty acid and glycerol. Inside your small intestine, you have tons and tons and tons of these finger-like projections called villi. The villi make the surface area inside your intestine much, much bigger. I'll actually put a picture up on the screen showing you just how fluffy your intestines look on the inside. They're kind of like um, uh, one of those microfiber cloth dusters that it reminds me of. The reason they're there is to just increase that surface area, make sure that your small intestine can absorb as many of those nutrients as you can from your food, uh, and it makes sure those uh, uh, nutrients are absorbed really, really quickly as well. Last bit we're going to look at in this first run through is the large intestine. Not much to say about the large intestine, sadly. It's just mainly where your water is absorbed and any extra salts that are in your food. And by the time the food has passed through the large intestine, it reaches part called the rectum, and it is now officially a stool or poo ready for you to deposit at the correct and appropriate time. What we're going to have a look at now are the parts that aren't involved in food directly, so the liver, the bile, the, um, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. They're a bit more complicated, so we're going to have a look at them in a little bit more detail now. Okay, onto those trickier parts of the digestive system then. We can start off by looking at the liver and gallbladder. The liver, the part in red, is the main factory for something called bile. Now, bile, you might, you've probably seen bile before, whenever you're sick, sorry to talk about sick everyone, whenever, you talk, whenever you're sick and you've not had any food, you might notice that your sick is sort of a luminescent or almost day glow, yellowy, greeny, uh, like fluid comes out that is actually part of your stomach acid and some bile as well so what bile does is it increases the ph makes conditions nice and alkaline in your small intestine and it neutralizes any stomach acid that is brought in with that food once it moves from the stomach to the intestine the bar that the liver makes breaks down fat droplets. Now fat, think of oils for example, when they're broken down after you've eaten them, they still remain, you know, in relative terms, really, really big. And that would make them normally really slow to break down. Imagine it like a lump of sugar versus putting granulated sugar in your tea. If you have a lump of sugar, it's gonna take a while for it to break down because the tea has to sort of get through the layer of sugar particles on the outside and each layer until it gets into the middle. Same with a fat droplet. To get to the middle of that fat droplet and break it down fully, you've got to get through all those layers on the outside first. So what bile does is it forces that fat droplet to break apart into smaller little droplets, which are much easier for enzymes to then digest. They've got a bigger surface area, so it takes less time or less sort of points of attack to break it down. So in terms of exams, you just need to know that bile emulsifies, breaks down fat droplets to make them easier to absorb or easier to digest. Your gallbladder, which is sort of the little green bit on the bottom of the liver, is doesn't actually make its own stuff. It stores bile that's made by the liver because you don't need it all the time. You only need it when your small intestine is sort of in use. So when it's needed, when food is moving down from your stomach, the bile will be sort of squirted out into the small intestine via the gallbladder. Our last part of the digestive system we need to look at in a bit of detail is the pancreas. Now your pancreas, I tend to call it the enzyme factory because it makes all the enzymes that you need. It makes the amylase that's in your salivary glands. It makes another type of amylase in, that's in your small intestine, but we often call this carbohydrates. It makes the lipase that breaks down fat. It makes the protease that breaks down protein. It makes them all. It also makes other stuff, uh, but that's for another topic. Okay, we'll leave it there today, nice and short. Next time we come together, we'll be looking at a bit more detail in terms of enzymes and what they do. So we'll be looking at the different enzymes, what they break up, what they break things up to and where this happens. And then after that, we'll look at things like denaturing. So what happens when you put enzymes in the wrong condition. So make sure you come back soon so you don't miss out. Have a good week and I will see you all very soon.